So tell me about the prostate and let's talk about some prostate cancer. Okay, so so basically um, the prostate is a walnut-sized organ mm -hmm. um, and it lives just beneath your bladder. So this is the bladder right here and this is the prostate. Um, and the prostate's job is to secrete about 99% of the ejaculate volume. Mm -hmm. So, um, and about 1% is the sperm that joins up here in the prostate and, and, and uh, that's how that process works. But again, the bladder and prostate. Now, um, I tell people the prostate is good for baby making when you're younger, um, but once you start hitting the age of 40 and, and definitely 50 plus, uh, two things can happen. One is that the prostate can grow, which is a genetic thing. So if the prostate continues to grow, it can lead to symptoms of BPH or benign prostatic hypertrophy. And as the prostate grows, it squeezes down on the urethra, which goes through here, um, and, and that can lead to urinary problems. But the second thing that can happen, and again, this really starts at age 50, 60, 70, and as you age, there's a higher and higher risk of prostate cancer. Um, the prostate can turn cancerous. Um, and that's when you can potentially have some issues. Okay. What are the different stages of prostate cancer? So there's classically four stages for prostate cancer. Um, this is stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. Um, stage one prostate cancer, you, you can barely see here if you squint, are little small focal areas of prostate cancer. Typically, this is not something that you can feel when you do a prostate exam, but they're, you know, the earliest stages are here. Um, now, that's the reason why, you know, some people say, well, why do you have to do a prostate exam? Why can't you just do a blood test? But we typically do both um, because some prostate cancers don't really have an elevated PSA, but you can feel it. And then in the earlier stages, you may not be able to feel it, but you certainly, this may demonstrate with itself with an elevated PSA. And a PSA is a prostate-specific antigen, so it's secreted by the prostate mm. into the bloodstream. Everybody, all men make it. However, if you have cancer, you may have a higher than normal PSA. So stage one cancer is confined to the prostate and then small little you know, uh, foci of prostate cancer. Now the interesting thing is this is stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. This prostate cancer can take up to 15, 20 years before it becomes a stage four cancer. Okay. And that's why, you know, uh, the American Urologic Association really is an advocate when it's appropriate. You can often do active surveillance or just watch these uh, small low-grade prostate cancers without having to intervene. Stage two cancer, prostate cancer is right here. You may be able to see where there's a little kind of lump here. And you may actually be able to feel that lump when you're doing a prostate exam. Um, so stage two is confined to the prostate. So here's the capsule of the prostate. And you can see it's kind of abutting the edge of the prostate but not growing through. So mm -hmm. that's stage two prostate cancer, but still curable. Stage three prostate cancer is now very much palpable, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. um, it may be growing into surrounding or uh, uh, structures like the seminal vesicles right here. Okay. Um, but stage three is now getting outside the prostate um, and this is a higher grade, higher risk prostate cancer in terms of possible death from prostate cancer. Um, and then finally, stage four prostate cancer, you can easily see that here, it's growing outside the prostate into the surrounding tissues higher chance of lymph node involvement, and it could be going and spreading into your bones. Um, so stage four is typically metastatic prostate cancer, high risk of death from prostate cancer. Are there any warning signs with prostate cancer? So with low grade or moderate grade prostate cancer, um, the scary thing is you may not notice anything in terms of any warning signs. Typically, um, you will start to feel that you have prostate cancer when you're more advanced. So these people in the stage three and stage four may have some symptoms, stage one and two unlikely to. Um, and that's why, you know, I'll in turn see some patients who say, well, why do I need to be screened for prostate cancer? I don't have any problems. But it turns out that's the perfect time to be screened when there is, you know, when you have no issues. By the time you have problems, stage three and stage four, you might notice blood in the ejaculate. You may notice uh, is, is one uh, sign. Uh, another sign, again, I don't want to confuse people with enlarged prostate symptoms, but you may have a, be having issues with pushing or straining to urinate just because the cancer is so significant. That can be a sign in some people. Um, and finally, when you talk about stage four prostate cancer, it is spread to your lymph nodes. Um, and usually these are in the lower extremities. The lymph nodes can get so swollen, they can impede return of venous flow or blood flow back from your legs. So you'll start to see your legs swell. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And when that happens, it, you're almost too late, unfortunately. So that's why early screening is best. And finally, when the prostate cancer becomes so advanced, it can spread to your bones, you're gonna be complaining of low back pain, um, spinal pain, and things like that. You could actually end up with random uh, rib or other bony fractures, and you know, it turns out it wasn't a fall, but you had cancer in your bones prostate cancer is metastatic and that caused the bone to fracture. Mm -hmm. So uh, point is, by the time you feel something, it's almost too late. So that's where we're really uh, big proponents of early screening, mm -hmm. typically starting the age of, uh, of 50 to 55, uh, depending, um, you know, earlier if you have a family history of prostate cancer, like a father, brother, uncle. Um, but then most people, if you don't have a family history, suggest at least about age 55 and then doing a yearly um, screening either with a urologist or uh, with your primary care doctor. And all that involves is a PSA as part of your annual blood test. Um, so it's just easy to tuck in with your cholesterol or other um, labs. And then a quick prostate exam, which you know typically shouldn't take but, but a few seconds. What age would you recommend someone get screened if they have family history? Uh, if you have a family history, we kind of suggest maybe a little bit on the earlier side, as early as perhaps age 50. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about prostate cancer prevention. Okay, so prostate cancer, um, they, there, there are some statistics that suggest that if you live to be old enough, all men are gonna get prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. So by age 60 on cadaveric studies, you know, people that passed away, almost 60% of people can have a tiny spot of prostate cancer. By age 80, it's almost 80%. So if you kind of run that out, if everyone lives to be 100 men, uh, that we all may have some small spot of prostate cancer. Uh, in fact, they say, you know, in their lifetime, one in seven, one in eight, you know, will develop prostate cancer while they're alive. Um, having said that, you know that, that one in seven, one in eight men are not dying of prostate cancer. Uh, prostate cancer, having said that, will you know, be a source of death in about a quarter million or so people um, in, in any given year. Now, in terms of um, uh, prevention and all, if it's part of your genetic cards, you may develop prostate cancers. There's not much to do, you know, that you can do about that. Um, having said that, in 2019, 2020, we now do offer genetic testing at Austin Urology Institute, and uh, especially if you find that you've got a first-degree relative, a brother, um, um, a father with prostate cancer, if there's someone with breast cancer in your family, colon, pancreatic, ovarian, um, sometimes that can be part of a cancer uh, complex within your family mm -hmm. and we're happy to do that genetic test and see if you're at risk for it. Okay. Um, now in terms of what can you do to reduce your innate risk of prostate cancer, um, certainly, and this may not come across as the most earth shattering information, but a lot of it is um, uh, directed towards eating well and exercising. So it turns out that obesity, higher risk of prostate cancer. People that are more thin, lower risk of prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. People that have a heavier red meat diet, um, higher risk of prostate cancer. People with a low fat diet, lower risk of prostate cancer. People that exercise less, higher risk. People exercise more, lower risk. So a lot of it centers around diet, exercise, maintaining appropriate weight, lower fatty foods, um, f uh, foods that are higher in, um, in antioxidants, uh, lycopene that's found in red tomatoes have been implicated with a healthier diet and lower risk for prostate cancer. So, and then finally, the other thing too is prostate cancer is often curable if detected early. So a lot of that centers around early detection and screening for prostate cancer. So beginning at the age of 50 to 55, we do recommend that you get uh, annual PSA or prostate specific antigen a blood test, as well as an annual prostate uh, exam. Um, that only takes a few seconds. And, and truly, um, if you can catch it early, you can detect it early, it can be cured early. Okay. What are treatment options for prostate cancer? So the treatment options for prostate cancer are, are very basic based on the uh, grade and stage of prostate cancer that you have. So um, here's the bladder and prostate, uh, bladder and prostate all the way across. Um, this is stage one prostate cancer, stage two prostate cancer, stage three and stage four. Mm. This is early stage prostate cancer. Stage two is uh, still curable early. Stage three is now starting to grow outside the prostate and then stage four is cancer is growing outside the prostate. Now when it comes to stage one prostate cancer, it may take 15 or 20 years before it becomes metastatic. So in these patients, 
um, you could do quite a few things. Um, that can start off with active surveillance, so you can just observe your prostate cancer. And we have a lot of patients who are 70, 80 years old and beyond um, who may die of something else before they die of the prostate cancer, so it's safe to observe. So we do something called active surveillance in those patients where every, about every six months, again, we tailor it to each patient, we'll check in with them, check on the PSA, and monitor it on a regular basis. So we'll do something called active surveillance. And certainly, um, we may do MRI as well and repeat periodic biopsy. And certainly, if the prostate cancer shows that it's more progressive um, or uh, accelerates, we can always choose some sort of um, definitive option for management. But active surveillance is an option for these people. Turns out as well that radiation therapy, so radiation, uh, which is delivered in external beam format, or radiation seeds into the prostate, mm -hmm. that can be curative for early stage prostate cancer. Finally, uh, prostatectomy or uh, radical prostatectomy. Uh, we do two types of surgery. One is the single port robotic surgery, and the other one is a, a, a traditional da Vinci robotic surgery where we use tiny incisions um, um, around the belly button and on either side to remove the entire prostate safely. But that can also be curative. Um, there are also two additional types of uh, management. One is called cryotherapy, where we can put a probe into where the, wherever the cancer is and super cool that area and kill the cancer that way. Mm -hmm. And then finally, you can actually do the opposite of that is something called high intensity frequency ultrasound or HIFU therapy, mm -hmm. where you can turn around and superheat the area and kill the cancer that way. So the example I kind of say is if the prostate cancer is right here, you can actually insert a probe into this area and specifically just kill the cancer in that one area and leave the rest of the prostate alone, which can help with preserving continence and potence. Okay. So that's for stage one. If you move through to stage two, a little bit more serious, a little bit more prostate cancer. In this case, you can see it's right up on the edge of the prostate. Um, you can observe those patients, but typically I don't recommend that. Mm -hmm. uh, in these people, you know, you could develop, you could move from here to stage three prostate cancer within five to seven years. You could go to metastatic disease within 10 to 15 years. So for these people, if you're a younger patient, say in your 50s and 60s, I might recommend definitive therapy. Uh, definitive therapy can again uh, uh, involve radiation therapy. We talked about radiation seeds that can be placed, external beam if it's delivered from the outside. Um, radical prostatectomy can be curative and removing the prostate and in some selected cases you can do the cryotherapy, um, the freezing therapy I just mentioned, or the high intensity frequency ultrasound. But again, this can also be cured. Okay. Um, when you move forward to stage 3 cancer, now where this is getting pretty serious. Um, you can't really do active surveillance or observe these cancers. Radiation itself will not probably be fully efficacious. In these people, when if, if it's possible and it's safe, I would recommend radical prostatectomy or removing the prostate. However, some of the cancer may have already escaped outside the prostate, and I would recommend radiation therapy to kill those few cells that have escaped outside the prostate. So it may be a combination. Um, and finally, some of these people, they may escape uh, surgery plus radiation and still have recurrent disease or residual disease. They might need even some adjuvant uh, hormonal therapy or uh, what would be, we'd call a, a testosterone deprivation, Lupron type of therapy to starve the prostate cancer of testosterone, which is its fuel that needs to grow. Okay. And then finally, you've got stage four disease. And in stage four prostate cancer, this is truly metastatic disease. It's now getting into lymph nodes and bone. It's too late to radiate in those situations for a cure. Surgery uh, is not going to be curative uh, either. Now we're talking about hormonal therapy to deprive the body of its testosterone again, which is the fuel for the prostate cancer. And you're not going to cure the patient at this stage, but you're looking to control the cancer uh, to the best of your ability. Um, and again, the best way to avoid getting into this situation is annual PSA and prostate exam screening on a regular basis should catch your cancer when you're in this stage with the best number of options uh, versus later when your options become limited. Okay.